Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics. All right, so I want to talk, I'll just give you an update. I totally neglected this channel and it's because I've had some big projects. So I'm going to try to get some videos done right now over the holidays and get those posted a little bit over time. But I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of an update of why I got so busy and see. Uh, well, first off, please comment if you guys want this because it's, it's actually a lot on me to try to make this happen. And it's a little bit risky, including that I could risk not getting these kinds of clients in the future. So I, th I think that at least I like to kind of live vicariously through others who get to experience things I can't. Um, things that at least I have a passion for or find interesting. And in this case, most of you probably don't get to experience what goes into, for instance, a high-end like million dollar home theater. So we've been talking about wanting to do this for a long time. Uh, many of you know, for instance, the Han Theater that Keith Yates did. So if you ask Keith if he wanted that to be publicized like that, he'd probably tell you no. That was publicized like that because of the owner, the client. He wanted it out there. He was so passionate. You got to know, that's like ne that never happens. It just isn't how it works. The vast majority of people who are building homes with million dollar theaters are building like anywhere from at the low end, maybe 30, 40 million dollar to 100 million dollar plus homes. So they're very, very expensive homes. And the people who can afford those want privacy and discretion. Meaning they don't want me to go on my YouTube channel or on Gene's YouTube channel and start doing videos of their private house where people can identify where they live, what their house looks like inside. It just, that's not what they want. So we don't get to show our projects very much and that's the norm. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't wanna show you. It's a benefit to me to show you because then maybe you're more likely to hire me or somebody else who wants to do a theater like that is. It's a benefit because you might find it interesting. I certainly would find it interesting to see that. If I didn't work doing this, I wouldn't know what goes into it, to be honest, and I didn't when I got started. So I'm hoping to get permission. We have a really big project going on over in Europe right now, and it's a really, really cool theater, and there's so many cool things to show off that I'm hoping we can get permission. And we've already raised it, and they seem interested. <coughs> Excuse me. I think at a minimum, we should be able to show you drawings. We should be able to talk about it and talk about the design process and the equipment and all that. We may not be able to go into the home and take pictures and videos and put those up. That's a whole separate issue, but I'm gonna try. I got another project local here to me, um, not right here, but nearby, and I'm gonna ask permission, and if they're okay with it, then during those later stages, I'm hoping to go in, do video, take some pictures, and highlight what went into that room too. I think it's very cool. It's actually not a big room, but it's a very nice and well-engineered room. It's a really cool house, so if we can get in there, especially when it's at its final stage, before the family's moved in, I think that it would be awesome. Uh, what I'm hoping to do, I have to go in and do a calibration. So my hope would be, since it should be done at the calibration phase, when I go in to do the calibration, I can shoot a quick video, uh, talk about the room. Uh, we've got photos during the construction, and then I don't bother the family. I'm not having to come in after it's done and they're around or anything, uh, but I can still show you something cool. So we'll see if that happens. I don't really know. I, I'm not making any promises. Couple other projects. So I'm working with the guys over at Absolute Ultimate AV. They sell these upgraded Christie projectors, which are just absolutely awesome. Uh, so they have what they call the AS model. Just for those who, this has created a lot of confusion. AS is specific to them. Nobody else can get those. Um, there are uh, other people who have modified Christie's, but you know the Christie AS model of a particular projector is it, literally the AS comes from their name, Absolute Ultimate AV, and. Um, Christie basically allowed them to do that. This is what was done with their blessing. So those projectors have an upgraded light path. The, the lens is upgraded and the upgrades were done very, very well. And as a result, you go from somewhere in the two to 5,000 to one range contrast, which is not great. And that's on off to 10,000 to one plus. And there may be potential for more yet. We'll see. And so that allows those projectors to really start to compete better. I mean, that's on par. It's not that far off from a Sony. And it's, it doesn't match a JVC in the on-off, but all it takes is about 2% luminance on the screen, average uh, screen luminance, for the Christie to pull ahead of the JVC. So going from off, like just a black screen, to something on the screen, yeah, the JVC is going to look blacker. Going from a star field, for instance, though, to anything brighter than a star field, even the star field will look better on that Christie. Now, I'm telling you that based on contrast numbers and, and what I've seen mapped out. I'm not telling you that based on having viewed all of these. I've seen one 
of these upgraded Christie's, but the M M4K15 that they they just came out and they've just gotten the upgrades done on, we're gonna actually put in this room and do a bunch of testing on. So hopefully we can cover that, but I wanna cover those rooms we're doing. So I'm doing three rooms for them. One is gonna have a Christie Eclipse, way cool. There is no better projector on the market. One is gonna have a uh, M M4K15 in it, also way cool. And I think in that price class, there really isn't a better projector. The Barcos have some advantages for sure. They do not beat it on contrast, not even close with these upgrades. It's not even in the ballpark. Um, the color is, on um, it, so it's in that's around $100,000 kind of price range, and you're talking about color that, that's around 98-99% uh, Rec 2020, which is basically the same as the upper end. Barcos do lower end, Barcos do only DCI-P3. So um, that one, I think, beats the Barco in the sense that it's got better black levels, and is pretty similar in every other way. Um, and then, you know, compared to a Sony or JVC, like I said, it's not going to have the blacks of a JVC. It does have basically the blacks of a Sony. It's ever so slightly worse, but I doubt you'd be able to notice the difference. Um, it is way sharper, and the color is much better. So again, it does full Rec 2020. Neither JVC nor Sony does anywhere near full Rec 2020. Um, they actually can struggle to fully cover 100% of DCI P3. So the fact that you can get 100% of Rec 2020 is amazing. Now you might say, well, do I need that? There's no content, right? Actually, there is. Apparently, they're not locking the, especially the discs, but even the streaming content to DCI P3. Sometimes they do, but that's not the norm, it seems. So there are quite a bit of movies. That Mario movie that just came out, not saying it's the greatest movie ever, but its color goes way past DCI P3 and it looks brilliant on a Rec 2020 projector. It's really cool. So, Anyway, we're going to cover the rooms. We're going to get to cover the projectors, basically. Those rooms have sound ISO in them. You're going to see the construction process and how that looks. We can fully cover those. They don't care. It's good for them, too, to get the advertising. So hopefully you guys will see how that goes together. But like I said, I really want to cover some of these really high-end rooms we do so you can see the process. The thing I have to warn you about is construction time on a room like that is typically about two years. So I have to figure out how to keep you guys entertained. But like, there's not a lot to see in between major phases. So what ends up happening is there's a design phase. I can show you the videos of the design. And then you may not see anything that's of any interest to you for another six months plus. Then there's the inspection phase where we go in and we inspect to make sure that basically the sound isolation stuff, the insulation was all done right. Wiring, if that was done at that phase, is done right, etc. So okay, I can show you a little video of that. And then it's probably gonna be another six to nine months before drywall is finished and everything else when we go back in and then the room isn't going to probably be done for another nine months after that. And that's just assuming everything moves along in a continuous and efficient fashion. There's always things that cause problems. So, so anywhere from one to two years is really the norm. And the really big projects are almost always two years. So it's kind of hard to cover these. But I'm hoping we can do something for you guys. Most of my projects, unfortunately, started less than two years ago. So we're still well into the construction phase. All right, so that's what's going on. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys find this interesting.